Now this morning, last week I spoke, um, was it last two weeks I spoke about called to serve. And I made the distinction clear that we have all been called. How many of us agree? We have all been called. The moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, he invites you in. And he asked us that we should go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Now, you realize the same scripture that Lady Abna uses. As a matter of fact, let's give it up for Lady Abna, my beautiful wife. Give it up for her for such good uh, words. Now, you notice that Jesus, the people, the servants that came at the latter, still received the same amount of money just like those who started from the beginning. They got the chance to negotiate their value. They got the chance to negotiate their price with God, but with a master. But the truth of the matter is that then at the latter end, Jesus said that, why are you so, do you think I'm that evil? It's just because that you came in early. You want everybody to be on the same level. But I came to let everybody know that even though we have all been called, we are all on different pathways. I'll say it again. Some people are going to be stronger. Some people are going to be bigger. But we are all work in progress. So then Jesus said, for many are called, but a few are chosen. I don't want you to hide behind the fact that he said only a a few are chosen that Pastor Jackson is the only one that can preach the word of God. I'm sorry. And then whenever I'm not around, that means people will not hear or listen to the word of God. But God wants to use somebody. And that's why this morning I want to stand on the fact that we have been called to serve. Hallelujah. When you are cho God's choice, when you are chosen to serve, what it means is that there are specific things that you can do better than the next person sitting to, next to you. And that person sitting next to you, there are specific things, giftings and talents that God had downloaded with them that only them can do that. There are other people that God is going to anoint to do extra things. But this morning, permit me to, to walk you on this journey of chosen to serve. Tell somebody chosen to serve. Well, come on, tell somebody chosen to serve. And I'm taking my scriptures from Luke chapter number 2 verse 41 through 49. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's work it quickly. Luke chapter number 2 verse 41 through 49. Is it there? Is it there? I need to grab my own Bible. All right. Now the Bible says that every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home. Please take it easy for me. They started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere but why did you need a search he asked didn't you know that i must be in my father's house other translation says that why are you looking for me i am about my father's business amen now the passover was a week-long celebration the bible says that for 12 years every single year mary as a matter of fact when she conceived of the holy spirit by the holy spirit she was between the ages of 13 to 14 so i asked myself that that was too early but then it notched me the holy spirit notched me the lesson age is just a number Hallelujah. When God asked Abraham to leave his kindred, according to Genesis chapter number 12, Abraham was an old man. God promised him in his late 90s, he had that promised child. Hallelujah. So one of the things, lessons that I want us to learn from Jesus here is that age is just a number. But the Bible says that for 12 years, Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. 
Now, when I was looking into it, I found out that people, the Jews were traveling together so that they are not attacked by bad people along the line. Hallelujah. So they went with Jesus. But one day, when they went after service, Mary and Joseph were going to hang out in Nazareth with some relatives, with some friends and family, just to have a good time. So they thought that Jesus was amongst the travelers, so they were going. Hallelujah. But what I want us to understand here, parents, is the fact that the Bible says that for 12 years, every single year, Mary and Joseph went, took Jesus to Jerusalem for the feast. Hallelujah. So when it comes to training up the child in the way he should go, so that when he grows, he doesn't depart from it, there should not be any negotiations. There should not be, okay, I feel like going to church. I don't feel like going to church. But when you raise that child, it doesn't matter how, how much they go wayward. But trust me, one day they will bump into the Savior again because in their subconscious mind, they still believe that there is a God who is the maker of heaven and earth so you need to walk with them it's a journey hallelujah sometimes it's not easy because these days they're exposed to a whole lord but as you do it gradually they will fall in love with the things of god just like jesus so they left and the bible says that jesus does not go with them jesus was asking questions for clarity and he was also speaking the mind of Christ to them. Now Luke wants us to understand that the focus is not really on Mary and Joseph, but the focus is more on Jesus. Jesus was the next level to the mind of Christ to the people. So when the people were all gathered, Jesus did not care whether he had to eat, whether he had to drink water, whether he had to sleep, but all that he was about was about the father's business. After three days, Mary came back. You son, I'm sure, they scolded him, yelled at him in anger and all of that. And Jesus stood there and listened to them like these people. Are you seriously kidding me? Aren't you the same person? Parents, I'm speaking to you now. Is that okay? Are you not the same person that God spoke to you about that child that you brought into this world? You know what God said he was going to use that son, that daughter for. But then why are you so worried? Hallelujah. They left him behind. What it also means is that in the, in the journey of service, as you are serving, it gets to a point where you feel like leaving or you may even abandon the, the calling that which God has instructed you to do and move away. But because of the spirit of God in you, you will always come back to pick it back up. Can, can anybody testify? I've been there before. Where I feel like I, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. Hallelujah. But they came back for three days. Listening. Lesson number two from Jesus. The Bible says that he was listening for clarity and was also giving them his thoughts on the subject that Jesus had a teachable spirit. Tell somebody he had a teachable spirit. So if you want to be a great servant, if you really believe that you have been chosen, then learn to humble yourself to learn. Is that okay? Because there are people who have worked on the journey where you are now starting. There are people who know better. In our dispensation, people feel like they know it because we can Google information and all of that. But Google or chat GPT, AI, artificial intelligence, is nothing like the spirit of God upon that person that has devoted themselves to mentor you. I get it to make life easier. But the easiest way for you to get comfortable in your service when you believe that you are being chosen is to go and move with people who have the knowledge of God and who have understanding. And no wonder that the Bible says that the boy grew in wisdom and in stature because he was learning from people, from people in the Sahindran, people who understood the test of time, even though we all complain about the Pharisees, but the rabbis knew where they were talking about, even though their walk was not in line with their talk. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So, we want to increase in wisdom. 
Because where the world is going, things have changed. The way we do church has changed. The way husband and wife need to love one another has changed. We are exposed to a whole lot. But one of the things that we don't need to miss out on is the fact that Jesus got to remain the center of our lives. And that is what Jesus was about. The Christ is the center of this. Mommy, why are you upset? Mommy, I'm available. Number three, lesson from Jesus. That Jesus was readily available. Tell somebody he was readily available. He believed that he was chosen to serve. And because of that, he availed himself. You can be gifted. You can be talented. But not until you avail yourself. Listen, God can never use you. He's not going to force himself on you. Hallelujah. On that day when he met Paul, Saul, now Paul, on route to Damascus, Paul was going to persecute the believers. So he was on his way. Paul understood the scriptures better than you and I. Hallelujah. So when he was going, God, it was easy for God to bump into him. Is that okay? Why? Because Paul was about the people's business. Whether winning souls or destroying souls, he was all about souls. Is that okay? But that day where he bumped into Christ, he, his availability shot up to another level. And that's why wherever that he went, he made sure that the mind of Christ was made known. Hello? Can, can I do this quickly so that we can go? Now, I am about my father's business. Not until you realize that what you are doing is about God, people will never place value on what you are doing. I'll say it again. Not until you realize that what you are doing is really for the sake of the kingdom of God, people will never take you seriously. We may not believe in you when you first tell us that this is what that say the Lord. But as you do it and we begin to see results, even those who are against you, they will begin to give you an, a helping hand. Is that okay? So then now, what does God want us to know? Take home. We have to be prepared at all times. Jesus' ministry started at the age of 12. But it was a preparation ground for him to build his craft. So now you are here. You are serving in those teams that you are serving in. But what I want you to understand is that you are building that gifting that God has given unto you. So you cannot live your life anyhow. You cannot act just anyhow. Then he takes me, let me share the scripture with you, Proverbs 24, 27. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. So preparation is very key it starts from one you move to two three four before you can get there we are not done we are not going to finish until the coming second coming of christ number two be yourself tell somebody be yourself when you believe that you have been chosen to serve people will test you and we have every right to test you because you know why it's our souls that you are coming to serve so we have every reason to question you. When you heard from God, I wasn't in your prayer closet with you. We were not there. But one of the things that God wants us to know is that just be yourself. Tell us about to be yourself. When you are yourself, you understand yourself better. When you are yourself, you are able to encourage yourself better. When you are yourself, you don't allow people to talk you out. But you stay put at all times. When you are yourself, you are able to learn to be alone. I will say it again. These there's people, there are some people, somebody said that they have never been single. Then I'm sure you have a problem. You need to learn to be by yourself, have a long time, discover you, rediscover you, re-energize you, re-put you, re-input you, recharge you, and then get back on track. But that can only happen when you spend time with you. Because that's when you can hear all deeply clear from God. Is hey, somebody hearing me? First Timothy verse 12. Be yourself, Timothy. Let nobody despise your youth. So this morning I was in my office and the Lord laid on my heart like, Kwame, it's not just about the youth. Being the youth, the Bible, remember the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that 
Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come nigh. When you say that I don't even... Uh, my bones now. These days I said I'm trying to lose some weight so go for exercises and my knees hurt, my legs hurt. I told somebody, said, oh, dude, you're getting old. I'm not getting old. Take it easy on me. But one of the things I want you to understand that when you are yourself, you will not allow people to talk you out. Is somebody with me? Finally, finally. Now behave yourself. Tell somebody, behave yourself. After you are being yourself or you are yourself, learn to behave yourself. Tell somebody behave yourself one more time. Like, hey, behave. Like, for real, behave. Because we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. We are the mind and the feet of Christ. Each one of us here have been chosen. Somebody is chosen as the, one, the right arm. Somebody is chosen as the left arm. Somebody is chosen as the ear. But the problem here is that we misbehave so much to the point that those of us who are the ear, we are trying to be the eyes. And that's why we cannot hear what we are supposed to hear. And those of us who have to be the eyes, when you are supposed to see, you are not seeing. But the Lord wants you to behave. Throughout the series, I want that last thing I want you, I want to leave with you that behave. So when people are misbehaving, I will tell, tell them behave. My friend, behave. Why? Because you are about the father's business. Do you believe that you have been chosen for what you're doing? Do you believe that you've been called for such a time like this? Remember Esther. Mordecai had no idea that Esther was going to become bigger than who she became. But he did well by preparing her. Wherever that you are, I want to assure you that God said he's taking you places. But you've got to be prepared. You've got to be yourself. It's okay to make mistakes, but learn from them. And don't repeat those mistakes. Now, after you have been yourself, learn to behave yourself. May God help us. May God keep us. May God shine his face upon us in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout a big amen. Oh, come on, shout a big amen. Amen. I want, I want you to talk to God. The Lord, whatever that you have chosen me to do, help me to do it and do it well. The song, any, every, any time I get the chance, I can't stop singing. Somebody may even say that. Why do you like singing the song so much? But it goes like this. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true You have been tried by the time is now to strike. I will be a living I will be a living Sanctuary, sanctuary for, you. for you. Okay, we'll take it again. Lord, prepare me. Lord, Lord prepare. prepare. I'm smiling because I know to be sanctuary. that somebody with an apostolic grace is seated here. Pure and whole. Somebody with a teaching ministry is coming out. With, with thanksgiving. thanksgiving Are you going to be a living? Come on, say it. I will be a living Sanctuary For you With thanksgiving I will be a living time with thanksgiving with thanksgiving I will be a living sanctuary Father today your people have heard your word one of the things I'm sure about is the fact that your word will never be sent and returned back for 
Father, we have been prepared and we are still preparing. We want to be sharper than before. And we want to be more readily available to you for your use. Father, this morning we avail ourselves. Holy Spirit, have your way. Abba Father, have your way. Use us like never before because we are ready to strike. Father, help us to be ourselves. Any intimidations from our surroundings, any intimidations from the enemy, we override it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we are doing all of this, we know people are looking at us. So help us to behave ourselves. Because our statements, our utterances, our actions are being judged every day. But Father, help us so that they can see you in our service. Because we know that is what is going to draw people into your sheepfold. Father, I thank you for using me. Father, download me with more. In Jesus' mighty name, I will pray.